Welcome back physics viewers to yet another Juddy Productions video again looking at the calculation for the value of gravity G on Earth. In this video we're looking at a really basic fundamental technique using the SUVAT approach. So on the screen at the moment you can see we have a ball that's been elevated a height of two meters and we've got a stopwatch and quite simply we're going to record the time it takes for the ball to fall through the two meters. So there it goes, and a value of about 0.63 of a second would be appropriate for 2 meters. Now this was done as a practical activity, we do multiple trials to get more precise data. Let's write this down, we've got the height of 2 meters, we've got an initial velocity of 0. The first time trial, T1, has been 0.63 of a second. The second time trial is 0.64 of a second. And the third time trial, T3, is 0.65 of a second. Now we can average those three time trials by adding them together and dividing by three and that gives us a value of 0.64 of a second. With all physical measurements there is an uncertainty with each measurement. We've estimated that the height using a measuring tape can be measured to the nearest centimetre, plus or minus 0.01 of a metre. The time trial, now based on a human reaction time in terms of a start and a stop of a stopwatch we've allocated 0.2 of a second, plus or minus 0.2 of a second for each of the three time trials. And we've also allocated that uncertainty for the average time. There's our results. Now let's look at this from a SUVAT perspective. The acceleration is what we're trying to solve. A is a symbol for acceleration. U is the initial velocity. We know that to be 0 meters per second. T, the time. We're going to use the average time. We've got an average time of 0.64 of a second. And the displacement in this scenario is 2 meters. Now here's our five SUVAT equations. We have 1, V equals U plus AT. 2, s equals ut plus a half at squared. 3, s equals vt, take a half at squared. 4, s equals a half in brackets u plus v, close brackets times t. And finally, 5, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now only one of these equations uses the variables a, u, t, and s. And that's our second equation, s equals ut plus a half at squared. So here's a SUVAT equation that's applicable to this scenario. We wish to rearrange this equation and make a the subject because after all we're trying to solve what is the acceleration from the other given variables. So in order to make A the subject by itself, let's simplify this equation. First of all, we know that the initial velocity is zero. So the product of u times t, when u equals zero, will also be zero. That simplifies our equation to s equals a half at squared. Now we can multiply both sides by two to get rid of the half, and we do that. That cancels out the half on the right hand side and leaves us on the left hand side with two s equals at squared. We're trying to isolate a as the unknown variable. At the moment, it's multiplied by t squared on the right-hand side. So when we divide the right-hand side by t squared, that cancels out the t squared factor. And doing it on the right, we must do it to the left. So we're now left with 2s divided by t squared is equal to a. And of course, we write this with a being the subject. The simplification of our SUVAT equation is the acceleration is equal to 2 times the displacement divided by t squared. That's the SUVAT equation we can use to calculate the acceleration of our object. So all that's left to do now is to substitute in the values for our known variables. A is the unknown acceleration. We leave that as A. U equals zero meters per second. T, the average time is 0.64 of a second. And S, the displacement is 2.0 meters. And we substitute these values into our equation of A equals 2S over T squared. And so the acceleration of this falling object based upon its displacement of two meters and its average time of 0.64 of a second is 9.77 meters per second per second. Let's now have a look at the percentage error calculation. We know the measured value that we just calculated to be 9.77 meters per second per second. And we know the actual value of gravity on planet Earth is 9.8 meters per second per second. To work out the percentage error, we take away the actual value of 9.8 from the measured value of 9.77. We then divide that by the actual value of 9.8 and multiply the whole fraction by 100. This gives us a percentage error of minus 0.31%. Negative just means that our measured value is less than the actual value. Finally, let's look at the error considerations in this investigation. Systematically, well, when I asked my class, these were some of the main systematic errors that could be identified. I had some students measuring the wrong side of the tape measure, measuring in feet rather than meters. This is systematic because it was affecting every measurement taken from every trial. Potentially incorrect zero reference, Students were using the wrong part of the tape to reference the zero when they were measuring. That was affecting every single measurement, so that also was a systematic error. The starting and stopping of the timing. I had some groups of students counting in 
a 3-2-1 drop. I had other students simply dropping the ball without any lead-in countdown for their timer in the group. Whatever technique was used, it was used for each trial and therefore it generates a systematic error. And of course there were others. Now random errors. These are errors that affect simply one trial randomly. So the reaction time of a person. Reaction times are not consistent across every trial and therefore they're random. Perhaps even the incorrect starting height. I had several students dropping the ball at different eye levels and that was varying the actual starting height. And it wasn't systematic in that it was the same error on every measurement. It was random. And of course there are many others as well. So I hope this has helped people understand a fundamental and basic technique that can be used to work out the acceleration due to gravity. Thanks for watching.